All right, let me give you a few tips on cutting tenons by hand. Sometimes it's actually easier than just going over and setting up a table saw, especially if you only have one to do. Well, first thing you need to do is know your measurement, and that always comes right off of your chisel. So you take your mortise chisel. This is called a mortising gauge. I actually designed this one. A friend of mine in Ontario helped me design and build it. So I have two cutters. I put the mortise chisel between them and then screw that in until it is tight. This little brass knob locks it so it won't move. Now that dimension is exactly the width of my mortise chisel. And when I chop my mortise, I do it with this chisel. So hopefully the walls of the mortise are gonna remain parallel and it'll be the exact width of the chisel. Now I'm gonna take my regular marking gauge and determine how deep my, my tenon needs to be. I'm, whatever setting it would be, I'm just gonna leave the gauge as it is. And I wanna have a nice sharp shoulder line that goes all the way around. Now on these edges where you don't have a whole lot of surface area out here to run the head of your gauge along, sometimes it's easier to roll it, but you want it to be nice and deep. That'll really help when it comes time to sawing that shoulder. And you want your marking gauge to be extremely sharp so that you get that nice clean line. Okay, now I'm gonna put this in the vise. Next thing I wanna do is center the tenon in the middle of the board. So I'm gonna guess at it first, lock the gauge, and then simply push that down and then turn it over. And from the other side, I'll see if I'm close and I'm not quite, so I gotta move that a little bit more. Bring that over just a bit, lock it again, push it down, turn it over, and they pretty much line up. So make sure that's nice and tight. Now on a normal marking gauge, if you're dragging it along like this, the shape of the cutter pulls the tool this way and keeps it tight, keeps the head of the tool tight to the face or the cheek of the board. In this case, the cutters are opposing one another, so that's not going to happen. So I pull with this little knob to keep the head of the tool nice and tight and so it does not wander. And it's always easier if you make several light passes instead of trying to do the job with one heavy pass. I find several light passes, you just keep making that mark a little bit deeper and then it gets to the point where it actually guides the cutter. Now we'll go down the face and stop at the line. And then same thing on this side. Now, I need some light on this, and I'm going to use a tenon saw. So, how is a tenon saw different than any other? Well, it has rip teeth designed to cut parallel to the grain. Mine have little starter teeth up here. I've, I, my tenon saw is a little bit heavier than a dovetail saw. It has a saw plate that is 20, measures 25 thousandths of an inch, so it's a little more stout. And I've got a little more depth of cut. I can cut two inches. Now, that's a long cut to make, and to get it accurate, there's a couple of things you can do. One, you can just start by working on the far side. I'm always pressing the saw laterally against my fingertip, or in this case, my thumb, so that I can control where that saw is gonna start cutting. Now, I find it easier if you get it started right like that, and then saw on an angle until you've come all the way along. In other words, you've established your saw curve along that line. That way you're not trying to Watch this line and the one down the face at the same time. Now this is gonna cause me to drop down so I'm not stowing at too great of an angle or else I'd be down at the bottom before I got all the way over here. And if I need to make adjustments, I can pivot from here and just alter the saw so that it is following the line. I'm wanting to stay on the waist side. Okay, now that I've got that kerf established, that'll guide the rest of my cut. Now what I can do is follow this line that faces me and simply tilt the saw on a bit of an angle. And I can do the same thing. I'm using the kerf here to guide and I can pivot from that to make sure I'm following that line to the bottom. And then I'm gradually going to lower my saw like this so that I'm cutting parallel to the top of the board.
and then I'll just take this down. Sometimes if this cheek out here is too thin, I'll actually push against it, and that'll help keep make the saw track. Tracking is simply when your kerf is narrow enough that the sides of the kerf rub on the sides of the blade and they force it to go straight. But if this piece is, is uh, too thin, it's going to want to fold it. It's going to bend away with a little bit of pressure from the blade, and then you're going to lose that ability. So by pushing against it, it just helps hold it in place, and you'll end up with a much straighter cut. Now, just before I finish that, I want to show you one other way you can help get this cut started that sometimes will uh, make it a lot easier. I'll take a chisel. And I'll come in here in the waist and just make a little shallow trough up against that marking gauge line. You want to have a nice sharp chisel and you're going to go easy on this. You don't want to blow by that line. But what this does is it gives you a shoulder or a nice flat face to saw up against. Let's get that stuff out of there. Make this one just a little bit deeper. Now I can set my saw in there. I've got, I can feel the teeth laying right up against that wall. And there's not so much guessing as to when the saw is actually on the line. Now you take both cuts all the way to the bottom and then your next task is gonna to be to remove this cheek. Give me just a second, I'm gonna finish those cuts and then we'll go over to the shooting board and I'll show you that. Okay, now this is my bench hook. And all it is is a device that's designed to A, um, preserve your bench so that you're not sawing down into that. It has a cleat on the front that catches the front edge of your bench, has a cleat on the back. You simply squeeze the board against the cleat so it's nice and solid. It also frees up my finger to help get that saw start, cut started. And of course, with a Western style saw that cuts on the push stroke, the cleat supports that. Now what I'm gonna do is to empty go in here and saw right along that line. I'm switching saws. I'm now gonna use a, a fine cutting 15 TPI crosscut saw. It has very narrow set, and it'll allow me to go in and make a very precise cut that I can actually join to. So what I've gotta get done is I've gotta get right on the line. And this is another one of those situations where if you want, you could come in and make that little shallow cut into your gauge line. Doesn't take very long, but it sure helps in the sense that it gives you that very positive shoulder to work against. So I'm squeezing with my thumb and my middle finger. I'm gonna use my index finger as a means of guiding the saw. I'm pressing laterally. Set my saw down in there until the teeth can feel that little wall. I've got to keep my saw standing plumb. Make that cut till we're all the way through, but I don't want to cut into the tendon. And I may not have, I, I may not have, well, actually, I haven't gotten all the way down, but I don't think I made my cuts with the frets, with the, uh, Tendon saw deep enough either. There you go. Okay, now that shoulder should be done well enough that we could actually come in and join to it and have a perfect glue joint, just like that. I would go ahead and cut this one off, then I would come in and make my cuts on the ends that are going to cut that tenon down to the exact length that we want. Uh, this is a piece of softwood, by the way, and if you're going to, if you want to get good at this, practice in a piece of wood that is soft enough that you don't have to put a lot of effort in to push the saw, which allows you the opportunity to practice more with the control. You got to get the control down first. You need sharp tools. The sharper the tool, the less effort's required. The less effort that you have to apply, the more control you have. That's the winning formula for getting a really good joint. Hope that helps.